Hello YouTube! This video is about socialism and liberalism and whether, whether they can be compatible with each other. It was suggested by uh, someone commenting on one of my past videos and I thought that I'd explain why I call myself a liberal and a socialist, what those terms mean to me, and, uh, and how they can fit together. Because to me they don't have to be in conflict. Uh, but the answer does come in terms of talking about definitions. Now as a foreword, I understand why some people grumble about any discussion of definitions. There's a worldview that's simple, and I think a little childish, where words have very clear definitions that everybody agrees upon. And from that perspective, the people who disagree are trying to be sneaky and dishonest. And while I uh, agree that some people will redefine things on a moment's notice to uh, escape being trapped in an, uh, in an argument, I think the possibility of that is the price uh, that we pay to be intellectual adults, able to think novel thoughts, and change our circumstances and worldviews. So I'll tell you about my definitions, and you can disagree with them, but uh, you shouldn't be afraid to not define things exactly as everyone else does. So long as you try to be consistent and ideally think about these things when you're not in an argument. Uh, because using different definitions, there's this concern that people can be trapped with certain ideas of, say, what justice is. Uh, and you'd have a whole society where maybe some lawgiver, maybe some religious figure, maybe somebody else gave them an idea of this is what justice is, and they laid it out in some beautiful, uh, consistent, elaborate, beautiful set of definitions, and then people stop, uh, they stop questioning what it is because this person has defined it. And so society moves along for a certain length of time and maybe those, uh, those ideas about justice, they seem not to deal well with certain social problems, but whenever people say, you know, maybe justice on this topic shouldn't be defined that way, you get a whole bunch of people saying, uh, -uh there's a definition of justice that, uh, that we were given, and you're not going to sneakily redefine it. And, uh... I, I think that it would be a shame for that society to, uh, to just decide, nope, that's our definition, we're sticking with it, uh, you're not allowed to question. Uh, learning to, to break down uh, existing ways of, uh, of how people think about topics, is, it's an important feature of society. It's not something that we should give up. So yes, I, I define my political uh, views as a variety of things all layered together. I'm a liberal. I am a socialist. I'm a technocrat, with the technocrat strongly flavoring the style of socialist that I am. I am part of the left. I'm a cosmopolitan. Uh, and I not only am not a progressive, I'm anti-progressive. Note that this means that I oppose the progressive uh, movement. Not that I'm taking a stance on all notions of progress, because it would be very difficult to take a stance on that, but progressive is a particular movement. It's not broad commentary on all notions of progress, no matter what somebody might tell you on that topic. I'm not a communist, and I oppose communism. And being opposed to communism, I also oppose Marxist forms of communism, and in general, the other parts of Marxism. These things layered, in my case, don't mean uh, that they need to be layered this way. Other people can have different permutations of beliefs and affiliations, uh, things like that. These are mine, and all of them are tailored a little bit to fit together. And that's the way that uh, I think people generally uh, form political views. They, they take a grab bag of things and they kind of mesh, uh, they, they mix them together. Uh, they make adjustments where things might not seem to fit, or they'll, they'll at least take a firm stance on areas where things don't fit. At least that's what you do when you're really trying to think about these things and when you care about getting the details right, uh, stuff like that. It, 
some a, a lot of people probably just pick a few uh, labels and they don't really think about it and they probably couldn't tell you at length about their political views but I care about getting the details right um, so in order to dig then have having laid the groundwork here uh, in order to dig into why I can uh, call myself a liberal and a socialist and explain why they don't conflict what I'm really explaining is that the uh, those terms in my understanding of them don't conflict with each other doesn't mean that other people might not define them differently in ways that they might conflict but uh, but I'm going to lay out what being liberal and what being socialist uh, mean to me and in doing so I think you'll find that at least with my definitions they don't conflict uh, and again I'm not suggesting you adopt all my definitions um, you have your own set of definitions that you've built in life for a lot of these things and uh, you can stick with that that's totally fine so to me there are a certain set of things that uh, that are the liberal commitments among these are that law is society's tool to regulate and better itself um, that uh, we want a social order with civil liberties and personal options at its heart that society should be concerned with both with both state power and concentrated private power uh, that liberty requires a certain level of access to resources to exercise freedom in more than a freedom from government way and that it's worthwhile to shape the economy so as to make acquiring that easier for citizens and to shape laws to make it easier for citizens on the legal front on on the uh, on the economy side if most people have landlords and most landlords have contracts restricting speech of their tenants I w uh, I, I think that it's not very liberal to consider that a free society even if the government's involvement is only in enforcing those property relations and uh, the contracts we would consider uh, because uh, because the the problem is is primarily power we would consider the the private concentration of power there uh, among uh, among the landlords uh, to be an issue as well and so we're we're willing to to look in, into regulating that um, and liberals uh, particularly value free speech as both a political and a social norm politically I think the government should be very wary of regulating speech generally doing so only narrowly and with strong justification and when we say strong justification I'm explicitly ruling out the idea that offense is a reason to bar speech so uh, likewise with lace majest laws blasphemy and so on uh, legally you're going to be uh, um, or liberals uh, will want you to be able to offend people they'll want you to be able to blaspheme they'll want you to be able to insult royalty uh, foreign royalty I guess in our case because we don't tend to be on board with the notion of local royalty and uh, we're wary of honors and the balance should be maybe slightly more generous um, with private censorship but we still want to build a, a society where you don't have uh, much in the way of private censorship and that you have to have at least a decent consistent justification and this is particularly true when private platforms uh, or private ownership of, uh, of land in the form of a landlord uh, group of landlords comes to be the dominant way uh, a society communicates uh, and so this would include to things like uh, this would include things like um, we want to avoid a layering of contracts that uh, that takes a lot of the ability to criticize the, uh, the powerful or just to express ourselves because the, the notion of free speech is not 
in our view, a fully purposed one. We value it in itself as well as a, a tool for um, political protest. Um, we think that it's part of uh, the idea of uh, human happiness to be able to ex express uh, your views on, on many topics. Liberals don't strongly value most forms of social tradition. Uh, uh, liberals value due process. And again, this gets back to some of the civil liberties. Um, and, uh, and we recognize that society has not always been uh, under our control. Our values have not always reigned. And so we, uh, when we look at past atrocities, um, when we look at uh, things like slavery, uh, when we look at things like um, uh, strong discrimination, uh, there were uh, groups like uh, Irish and Asian Americans who suffered a lot of this in our history. Our approach, uh, our approach is to identify the groups that still need such protections to identify the areas of life where it really matters, like housing, access to general goods, uh, and non-customized services, jobs, and education. We want to ensure that there's no discrimination left, except in the rare case that it's strongly justified. And, uh, and, we, uh, and third, we want to spread the idea of responsible colorblindness and analogs to that. We're outside of some domains of life, for example, who we date, and to a lesser degree, whom we befriend. We ignore non-essential differences, uh, uh, again, and less strongly justified, and become wary of broad categorizations of these groups. And as part of the above, while, uh, while most liberals will, re will reject ideas like reparations because they're, they would establish a group right and they would undermine social solidarity, many liberals, uh, I would again include myself in this, uh, accept for a limited duration, which maybe should come to an end within the next 20 or 30 years, affirmative action in education only. Permanent differences in status and privileges are unacceptable in society. Um, and, uh, or at least permanent group differences. Our goal is to build a society where we treat people largely as individuals, strongly de-emphasizing groups. Uh, liberals believe in a free and diverse press and in finding ways to ensure that news organizations are viable as businesses we would like them to be hyper viable, meaning that we're trying to give them a leg up in terms of whether they exist or they don't. And the reason for this is that just like having a post office with a universal service obligation, uh, they serve important societal functions. And even though they're a business, they're a business that we, uh, society would not do well without it. And there's a danger uh, with shifting economics that they might become as a whole unviable or at least not viable enough to do their job. Uh, we also often believe in limiting consolidation of businesses, particularly news orgs, but also much more generally because such consolidation rarely serves the public interest. Uh, and uh, this concerns kind of straddles both economics and politics. More on, on that point later. Um, liberals often, and I uh, include myself in this, believe in universal public education as mandatory. There's room for some limited exploration of alternative forms of public education, but no room for truly private schooling or curricula that would be unacceptable if done by the state. And at most, we can offer a little bit of a compromise uh, to swap a single day per week of public education with two days a week of private ed. And that's not a ratio. That's literally, we might decide, instead of five days a week of public schooling, you can do four and then do a two, uh, two additional days of private education. But in general, we want to end private education 
uh, full pri uh, private schooling ex at the exclusion of uh, public schooling should end. Homeschooling should also end. Um, I, we could make some very, very limited compromises there for people with unusual medical needs or who have mental issues that would be disruptive in a classroom. But this should never come to even slightly resemble a carte blanche. Um, and the above isn't complete, but it gets the flavor of what liberalism means to me. It might mean different things to different people. Um, and But before we go further, and I, I mentioned, uh, I set aside this point earlier, I see questions of the economic system and questions of the political system as being largely separate. There's some overlap, but, but they're largely separate. Liberalism is a political philosophy. So it's primarily about laws and the way we like society to be. Social, uh, socialism is an economic one. They can share some of the same values and reasoning, touch on some of the same topics, but all kinds of permutations are possible, including autocratic capitalism, which some libertarians actually want, critiquing democracy's two wolves and a goose voting on what's for dinner. Um, that's a common quote back from my much, much earlier in my life, uh, libertarian days. As for socialism, I'm a market socialist. Uh, I believe in a market economy, but not free markets. If you read up about market soci socialism, you'll find a lot that generally fits with my usage of the term. Um, and uh, it's not too hard to uh, to find I find a lot of materials ab about that. Um, I believe that private ownership of companies and the other engines of wealth is not ideal, and that companies should be accountable both to their workers and to societal interests in general. And when I say ac be accountable, I mean it in the uh, in a hard form. Uh, I mean adjusting what ownership means and if it should uh, be a thing. So uh, the the classic business magnate uh, like Andrew Carnegie, uh, that's not uh, really part of uh, market socialism's vision uh, for the uh, e economy. In the long term, I see competing businesses largely owned by their workers as the ideal business arrangement. Uh, less exaggerated than now, benefits to founders are reasonable. And such entities should also be significantly more accountable to not going against uh, the public good. And this includes both the immediate public opinion and the public good as codified by more expansive legal definitions. Um, so the, the current idea that you're largely accountable to your shareholders, uh, and I know that there's a, a super hard form of uh, super hard and mistaken idea that uh, businesses are ac accountable, to, that they're essentially required to make the, the most um, immediate profit for their shareholders. That's mistaken. That's not actually how, uh, how these things work in corporations. But the actual way that things work is something that, that I still think needs a change. Um, on the topic of, uh, of public opinion, I think that uh, people uh, as, as a group should have an easy mechanism to bend tax rates within a certain range on businesses that either please or anger the general public without any hard uh, rules around doing so. Um, so companies should need to be at least a, a little bit PR uh, responsible if you make uh, if you make people in general angry at your company, then one way that you might imagine this working is if you have a certain uh, taxation on earnings uh, for corporations. And I think this sh that this shouldn't be a huge thing, but if you imagine it set by default at uh, ten percent, um, but you might have a process where you'd have a referendum, and for the next year, or the next two years people might decide to uh, to move it anywhere in the range between maybe 5 and 15%. And uh, 
I think that would be a, a useful mechanism to, to produce a certain amount of direct accountability. It might be an unreasonable thing because people in mass are not always uh, reasonable. But um, but I think providing some of that control would be a good thing and probably could happen pretty quickly without serious concerns about abuses. Um, on, on other topics of socialism, I believe marketing should be very heavily restricted. Uh, I see all property as a societal choice as much as any other uh, societal choice like taxation. It doesn't exist before government. It exists to serve so, uh, societal needs, and its specifics can and should be tailored over the long haul to serve those needs. Uh, I aim to preserve most private chattel property with taxation and possible exceptions of uh, the general preservation in times of need given strong justification, um, as well as uh, real property of amounts and degrees owned by the majority of people in the country. So the idea here is nothing like mass confiscation or anything like that. Um, I'm a gradualist. I don't see rapid shifts in the legal structure around the economy as desirable. And I think that moving rapidly would be dangerous. So any changes towards my preferred economic order should happen slowly and largely voluntarily with incentives uh, uh, figured, uh, figured into it. I don't think socialism should limit people's economic choices too narrowly. And I value the self-determination many people feel in terms of what kind of job they want to seek, as well as the options available to them. I aim to ex preserve and expand that uh, quality uh, and ideally not have it unavailable to such a large percentage at, at the bottom rings of uh, society. I generally support voting in the workplace and, f uh, and think this, as well as the changes uh, to make it work, would improve businesses and worker welfare. And outside of my concerns uh, above and other things I may have forgotten to list here, I still value efficiency and frugality. Uh, and there might be many particular ways to, uh, to meet these ends that I'd be happy with, so long as they worked well enough. And uh, I, uh, I also believe in, I guess I'm going to wrap this up by saying I believe in having well-defined minimums uh, for people as part of a general safety net that might or might, you might or might not see it as being part of uh, socialism. Because in general, I think, uh, excuse me, <coughs> in general, I, I think strong safety nets have nothing to do with socialism. Uh, you can have capitalism with strong safety nets. Um, so maybe this should have been under the, uh, the liberal, uh, the liberal commitments uh, section rather than the socialism section. Doesn't, <coughs> excuse me, doesn't really matter, but, um, I, I think it would be good to have an I uh, well uh, well enun uh, enunciated minimums that we're going to try and pr uh, provide for everybody at various levels of being able to work and being interested in work, things like that. We're uh, we're not going to have people starving on the streets. Uh, we will guarantee everybody at least minimal. Uh, housing, uh, maybe a very, very small room um, if they need it, and uh, and sufficient access to food to survive. Uh, I, I see this as essential, even if somebody's completely unwilling to work, they're still going to have a minimum, and this will also allow us to um, to ensure that nobody's living on the streets. We can take them off the streets and put them in this kind of housing as need be. And if they're willing to work minimally, then they can have a uh, somewhat nicer version of this. Uh, and just providing uh, providing these kind of minimums, I think, uh, it gives people things that they can rely on. Uh, it should also include access to health care, just having a generous social safety net, this, this really probably fits a little bit more with liberalism than with socialism. 
but having so, uh, social safety nets that are sufficient to prevent people from starving, no matter what their willingness to work is, uh, nobody starves, nobody's going to die of easily treatable uh, medical uh, issues, things like that, um, that opens possibilities for people. Anyhow, uh, I will argue that at least as I define the terms here, liberalism and socialism, they fit well together. I wouldn't want to live in a country that's socialist but not liberal because the things I listed under the liberal checklist are very, very important to me. And a socialism without civil liberties, it's just a bad society. Uh, without that bedrock free speech, um, I, I think that system would have to uh, come down. And this is why I, I'm very comfortable condemning many socialist movements in the past um, because they were really often quite bad about civil liberties. Cuba, um, uh, Chavez, uh, Mao, a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of these countries and these leaders, they were not trying to be liberal, even though they were trying to be socialist. Uh, and those are societies that are not worth living in. Those are societies that aren't worth uh, building. They're societies that are worth tearing down. Uh, and while I'm doing pretty okay, as um, uh, in the United States, which has substantial uh, liberalism, as I understand it, in our um, in our system, it doesn't have a lot of socialism, and I I think that it would be good to mix my notions of of socialism into it. Of course, I'm just some random person on the internet. Um, and really, this is not intended to be a United States-centric uh, analysis. I can't help it to a certain extent because I live here. This is what I know the best. And even though I try and pay attention to the rest of the world, uh, the center of my attention is always going to be what I know the best. Anyhow, that's, uh, that's how I think these things can fit together and how they, they can form a coherent political platform. Some time back, I put together a website called technocraticsocialism.org that explores uh, more of the mix of my technocratic commitments and my socialist commitments. But really, there's a lot of liberalism that slips in there too. If you're interested, go visit the website. Uh, it just, uh, it, construct something reasonably equivalent to a party platform, what it would look like for having somebody uh, like that running for office and taking stances on the issues of the day. Anyhow, if you have any questions on this or other topics you'd like to see me talk about, uh, let me know and I will eventually uh, go through the process of putting together notes because you always probably should be putting together notes when you're getting ready to talk about something just so that you don't hit one of those uh, oh I've lost what I was talking about um, and I'm just going to kind of pick something new and talk about it or you don't just kind of stutter there paralyzed by the camera but anyhow I, I, I put together notes over the last few days and uh, it eventually turned into something sufficient for me to do this um, but I'm happy to talk about other topics uh, it's kind of fun. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to get back in the habit of making videos regularly, but uh, this is fine. Anyhow, bye-bye, have a nice day, and uh, enjoy the summer.